So welcome to EV Brief. I've been one to often criticise the inner city SUV drivers, but I do understand that some people need a car with seven seats, with a heap of kids, a heap of luggage, that sort of thing. So exhibit A, Kia's Sorento PHEV plug-in hybrid. This has a uh, 1.6 litre turbo petrol engine mated to a, um, uh, an electric drivetrain with a 14 kilowatt hour battery total system output of 195 kilowatts, 350 newton meters. And what we're going to do, we're going to see just how this car goes for uh, a week, um, see if the electric only mode is suitable for daily usage, daily commuting, um, and whether plugging in every night is a viable option. So yeah, it'll be really interesting to see how this goes. Now this is an $82,000 car um, before on-road costs, which is a lot of money uh, in any sense. Um, but, you know, I'm going to show why this car might be a possible alternative to uh, luxury battery electric vehicles and certainly luxury petrol and diesel engine vehicles. And in this top spec um, PHEV uh, configuration, the Sorento comes fully loaded. You've got uh, LED lights and everything you can see at the front, big alloy wheels, 19s with continental tyres. Uh, and on the inside, you've got a very, very nicely appointed interior. Let's have a squiz now. There's leather everywhere. I'd prefer to see an animal free option. But um, what they do, they've got leather all over the doors and the seats, nice contrasting piping. There is electric seats with a really nicely adjustable uh, squab which can uh, extend underneath your legs. Nice piping there. And cool textured details with ambient lighting across the dash and the doors. There's also this really lovely panoramic roof above which spans the driver and um, rear compartment. Up front is a traditional Kia two twin display. Uh, you've got your driver instrument cluster with some neat graphics on it. You've also got the central uh, driver information screen, which is accessible by passenger to show your map and uh, phone mirroring, uh, EV modes, radio, media, climate, etc. etc. The, um, the build quality of this thing is really nice. Metallic elements everywhere, leather on the doors, soft plastics. Let's have a look in the back. Now this is an SUV where they've thought about a lot of the design details and the comfort options for passengers. A lot of these things would have been uh, the domain of the Audis and Mercedes just a few years ago, but you've got things like rear heated seats as standard, obviously rear electric windows, these nice manual sun blinds, both speakers, and Kia has included, very wisely, USB ports everywhere. Uh, if I just turn up the ISO, you can see there's USB ports built into the back of the front seats and there's USB ports and 12 volts down here in the center console tunnel. LED lights up above, that nice sunroof. And then of course, being a uh, seven seater, that flips forward electronically, which is really nice. And then look, I've got some camera gear and work stuff in here, but this row is nicely appointed too. Again, USB ports and um, climate control buttons back here. In the back you can see climate control for the third row, control of the second row seats, and then these fold down quite simply. It is a spacious, spacious SUV. And of course, electric tailgate at the back. Now as mentioned, the quality is really nice. This is a comfortable place to be. We'll talk more about the ride and handling and drive later, but as a passenger, there's a lot of really nice tactile points. Everything falls easily to hand. There's a lot going on. It is a bit of a button fest, but that's okay. It's uh, just a bit of a learning curve. Heated ventilated seats are really nice in, uh, in all seasons. And there's a bit of faux stitching there on the dashboard. So I would not buy this sort of car myself, but it's gonna be really interesting to see if you can run it as an EV only. Now they claim a, I think 68 kilometer EV only range. I believe when you get to 15% battery, the petrol engine will kick in, so you can't run it right down. But you know, for a lot of inner city commuting, that's gonna be more than enough. It's got a shorter front end than a lot of uh, SUVs. You can see an older Mercedes GL parked behind. I think it's quite attractive. You've got this kind of silver bright work um, that is sort of trademark of Kia's newer cars here on the side and on the rear C pillar. Hux to the um, carnival with the kind of metallic detailing on the side too. It's got a very nice glass house profile as well. 
Kia's new badging has been controversial, but it's growing on me now. Um, a lot of people have said it looks like the band's logo from Nine Inch Nails. It kind of does. Look that up if you, you're not sure what that looks like. But it's, it's modern, it's better than the old Kia Roundel, and it's got a really cool brushed aluminium finish to it. It sits, sits quite proudly there above the camera and the sensor array on the front of the car. Now this is still uh, an older generation platform and a bit of a hybrid between, well literally a hybrid, but a hybrid between older technology and where Kia is heading. So expect the EV6 full SUV to really kick things up a notch in terms of software, design uh, and bits of pieces and inclusions and technology when that comes out in Australia next year. And in terms of design, you know, I actually don't mind it for a big hulking SUV. It's got hints of the Rolls-Royce Cullinan and Bentley uh, Bentayga, dare I say, in this kind of squared off angular kind of back. Moving around to the side, I see a bit more kind of Toyota and a little bit of Renault in here in this side. And then it's got very distinctive kind of Kia front. Wide opening for the grill, headlights that are sort of reminiscent of a, a Dodge or a, a Jeep. But Kia's design language is certainly evolving in a nice direction. So yeah, that's been my very first look at the Kia plug-in hybrid Sorento. Uh, stay tuned for more content this week about how this car drives and how it handles its uh, EV-only duties around Sydney.